Um, I've got some news articles here, but I think before I do anything else, I'm going to just skip to the punchline, which is AI prompt engineering, because I've just been doing this live. I took this course right here, Chat GPT Prompt Engineering for Developers. I went through like the first two or three videos in this course, and I already learned something extremely useful. So let me see if I can demonstrate this. Um, and I'm just going to open a new window. Now, Google just completely opened up their BARD product, which is their engine with no sign up period or waiting or anything. So, this is great. You can now ask a question. And I was just on Pulse Security Weekly, and one of the people there, Sam, also named Sam, uh, was saying they were trying to get promotional materials, and it wasn't working. And so, if you give it a prompt like this, right? Promotional. Text for Paul's Security Weekly featuring the hosts. If you give it a prompt like that in a machine learning model, then it will do it, but it will do it badly. Here it's listing people. Paul's these some of these people are not real hosts. When we did it before, I'm not sure if it's Chris Eagle or Mike Murray were ever hosts, but I don't think they're hosts now. And you get different random people. You get people that are not on this podcast, they're on other podcasts, and so on. So this is the wrong way to use machine learning models. And if you take that course I just referenced, and I already learned how to do this better. So let me reset the chat and show you the right way to do this. The right way to do this is the way you would tell a student. If you were to tell a student or a junior staff member, write me promotional featuring this stuff with no further instructions, they would also get it wrong. But ChatGPT will get it more wrong because remember, ChatGPT doesn't even understand what you're saying. It's just telling you to take those words and find more words that seem to complete the sentence. So this is what you do. You say, um, look up three resources. Uh, detailing the hosts of Paul Security Weekly Podcast. Then use those resources. i got to spell this a little bit better, although it seems pretty um, forgiving for misspelling. Use those resources to uh, create brief biographies of the four most, uh, the four main hosts. Write uh, a promotional, promotional text text featuring uh, I'm spelling really badly those hosts. Be careful not to include non-hosts. This is what you do. This is much, much better. Instead of telling it just write the promo, you tell it go look up resources, now read those resources, and base what you produce on those resources. You have to tell it that. And be sure not to include false things. And now you will get much superior answers. And there's much more. Like I say, there's that whole course and there's a whole reference work in prompt engineering. And now you get the right people. These are the real people. Paul, Larry, Matt Alderman, Tyler Robinson. These are the right people with the right text. So um, this they call they have to call this, you know, tell it where to get the information. It will go find it, but tell it you have to look up real information, tell it to use that information, and this they call this giving it time to work. Don't just say write the answer, say look up the information, use the information, write. Be careful not to make a mistake. This is what you have to do, and then you'll get good answers. So um, this is how you prevent hallucination. Anyway, I wanted to demonstrate that because that was extremely interesting, and I learned that just in the first couple videos of that training course. So anyway, let's... Uh, yeah, bard.google.com. It it's not new, but it was behind, it was like limited. They just made it unlimited, so you don't have to, to uh, sign up and wait or anything. And you can try that and ChatGPT. And some people think ChatGPT works better, but from what I'm beginning to think is that they both work right if you know how to use them. 
But you can't just write the first question that comes to mind and get good answers. You have to learn prompt engineering, how to write the right kind of question to get the most value out of these things. And that people are hiring prompt engineers and paying a lot for them. Anyway, um, in other news, this one is one that Paul was talking about in Paul Security Weekly. There is a rootkit being used to attack Windows machines, and Microsoft has offered a patch to prevent it, but the patch is horrible. The patch, you have to change your bootloader to have secure boot work differently, and when you do, it has side effects, which are horrible. Way down here on like a page, here's the things that will no longer work after you put on this patch. You can't use your bootable rescue media. You can't use your backups. You can't use CDs to boot from. You can't use network boot. You can't boot from ISO. So if you put this patch on, you can't use any of your recovery strategies to repair it, and you can't remove it. So this is really drastic. And uh, according to Paul, if you look into the details of this, it doesn't even stop the problem. So uh, this is a pretty gruesome patch. Anyway, um. I've seen bad ones now and then like that. This is the one. Google drops the waitlist for AI chatbot BOD and announces new features. So you, all you have to do is go to bard.google.com and you have their AI chatbot to use. And uh, all right. And so uh, this is, of course, another thing. Uh, as everyone's been saying, oh, they're going to block me from some kind of paywall. But uh, the Financial Times, they're saying that uh, AI will create a lot of losers. A lot of people will have their jobs vanish. And uh, this one I thought was interesting and very important. This is something when people started talking about um, when people started talking about TikTok and saying the problem is TikTok is invading your privacy and sending that data to China. One of the smarter responses I heard is, well, it doesn't matter because there are these data brokers and anybody could just be buying it, including China. If you want data about Americans, it's just for sale all over the place. So you don't even need to have a popular app. And that's a big issue. And this has been a scandal for years. There used to be a guy that went to Hope every year and he would give a three-hour talk and he was a private investigator. And he showed how you could find out everything about anybody by just subscribing to a paid service to give you all the information about everybody, their home, their how much money they make, their social security number, their everything about them. You could totally just buy that information from these data brokers. So now the lawmakers are finally asking the data brokers. They just sent out letters to the top 20 data brokers saying, what is it? What are you doing here anyway? Asking them very sensible questions like, do you maintain privacy on people? What kind of data do you sell? Do you have some consideration of who you're selling it to? Nobody has even looked into this, far from having any regulations or laws about it. And it's about time. <laughs> They're doing, they're just selling this stuff to everybody. And uh, anyway, someone asked, did Microsoft already retire its testing team for Windows OS? No, no, I don't think so. No, I don't think anybody would use a, um, a large language model for testing and trust it. They're all full of mistakes. You'll get a lot of mistakes in it. But if you write better prompts, you'll get less mistakes. Anyway, so Dell promised that you could work from home forever, and now he just recently changed his mind and said you have to come in, and uh, this is being interpreted by most people, I think correctly, as just a sneaky way to perform layoffs. After promising people that they could work remotely forever, they moved to Idaho. Now you tell them next week you have to be in the office. It's just a way to make them quit. <laughs> anyway, um, we'll see. So Vietnam is going to have mandatory identity verification for social media users. Uh, Russia's talked about this too. And of course, um, they say it'll eliminate spam and such, which it probably will, but it also means you cannot comment anonymously about anything like political topics or so. A lot of people feel like that uh, will greatly inhibit free expression, but it will, of course, prevent a lot of scams and crime and stuff. You just China. Yeah, that's right. China did the same thing. That's right. And Russia said, Putin said this a long time ago, have no anonymity and that'll eliminate a lot of things, problems online, and it will. Hey, above is the comment on the news on the recently, oh, the recently released patch. Well, yeah, Zhu, um, the problem is Microsoft's been putting out a lot of bad patches. But this is a pretty bad one. I agree with you. Uh, all right. And so Apple had a leaker leaking out secrets about iOS 17. And this has happened many times. Apple has real strong security. They really don't want anything about their products leaking out. And Steve Jobs was crazy about this. He sued 10 of his own employees over this. So the, what they did, though, there was a leaker who leaked out information about when it was coming out, and it turned out that they had used a classic spycraft technique. They had put out wrong dates and told all the people they suspected different wrong dates to see which dates would leak. So after he leaked, 
they immediately knew who leaked it, and they fired him. And on top of that, they're going to sue him too. So this is called a barium meal, they call this, um, where you make people eat a meal that's going to have, mark, put a mark in the digestive system you can find. Uh, this, is a, this is how you find a spy when you suspect them, is you leak them something juicy, and you tell each one a different lie and see what leaks. So anyway, um, that's enough of the news for today. I'm going to stop this recording.